All right. This next chorus, the words are, "All I need is you, Lord." So. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. And all I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. I left my fear by the side of the road. Hear you speak, won't let go. I fall to my knees as I lift my hands to pray. God, every reason to be here again. Father's love that draws me in. And all my eyes want to see is a glimpse of you. All I need is you. And all I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. And all I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. One more day and it's not the same Your spirit calls my heart to sing Drawn to the voice of my Savior once again Where would my soul be without your Son? Gave his life to save the earth Rest in the thought that's ringing over me I'm sorry All I need is you, Lord Is you all I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you, and all I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, and all I need is you, all I need is you. Everything on earth Behold The universe Yeah, you hold Everything on earth And all I need is you All I need is you, Lord All I need is you All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. And all I need is you. Next chorus is going to go like this if y'all want to sing along. Be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us, you're near and it says to us, our good. Be near, oh God, be near. Oh God of us, you're near and assist to us, our good, our good. You are all big and small, beautiful. Wonderful to 
trust in grace through faith that I'm asking to taste. Darkest light to you, the depths are high to you. The far is near, but Lord, I need to hear from you. Be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us. Your nearness is to us, our God. Be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us. Your says to us our good our good your fullness is mine revelation divine but oh to taste to know much more than a page Feel your embrace For dark is light to you The depths are height to you as far is near But Lord I need to hear from you Be near, oh God, be near Oh God of us, your nearness is to us Our good God of us, your nearness is to us, our good. Be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us, your nearness is to us, our good. Be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us, your nearness is to us, our good. Are good. Thank you. Dear God, dear God, I thank you for allowing us to come out here today and worship you out here. I thank you for all of these people that want to come out here and worship you. I thank you for all the people that are coming to help. I pray that the rest of this service goes well. And I pray for all these people. In your name I pray. Amen. Um, today I want to talk about the power of one. Uh, what, what can one person do? And uh, what, what impact can a single person make on the lives of others? I've heard it said that I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. What I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. And I would like to read from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. It says, uh, these are spoken words of Jesus. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. If you are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So my question is, what can you do to make a difference in someone else's lives that you know? And one of the keys is consistency. It's consistency in how you react to adversity. It's consistency in how you respond when things don't really go your way. Um, the way you communicate with other people, because people are always watching. And just the little things that you do will really make a large impact on their lives. Just a couple examples of things that, that I personally enjoy doing. Um, you know, going out of the way to open the door for someone and just watch the look on their face because because they don't really understand why you're doing it um, or for example um, being a really crowded store and just let somebody randomly cut in front of you um, again they don't really know what's going on and, and it's just kind of fun to watch the expression on their face or if you're in a parking lot and you see a mother with a child who's unloading the groceries and she's about to have to push her buggy you know go over and grab that cart 
Um, now, you don't want to run up on her and make her think she's getting carjacked, because I've had that happen before. You have to be really careful about it. But just little things that you can do to people um, to just show acts of kindness really goes a long way. And, and, and those things build up, and, and it builds through them, and then they, they will do that to others as well. And it has a lasting impact on them. So I want to share a couple stories of people who have made an impact with just a small idea. Um, a lady named Taryn Davis, about uh, four years ago, Taryn's husband was killed in Iraq by a roadside bomb. He was 22 years old. Um, we hear these stories all the time. You know, it happens, unfortunately, a lot. But uh, as you can imagine, Taryn was distraught by what happened. Um, she, you know, she sought uh, counseling and guidance from her family and her friends and was really looking out to see you know, what was available for her uh, at this time. And so what she discovered was there wasn't anything that was uh, specific to her needs. And so what she did is she took it upon herself and um, started with a concept and, and grew this into what is known as the American Widow Project. And through this service, she has connected over 800 widowed military wives via the internet and community groups and social outreach. All that started with just a simple idea. In Roseland, one of Chicago's most dangerous neighborhoods, most people stay off the streets for fear of gang violence and, and what's going on in the neighborhood. But not one grandmother. Uh, a lady by the name of Diane uh, Latiker, a um, mother of four, had a lot of concerns for her two youngest children as they were becoming teenagers that they would uh, succumb to the life of the street and the gang violence. So she spent all of her time with these two kids and uh, got them in sports activities and took them to the movies and just basically consumed their time uh, trying to keep them out of the, the neighborhoods. One of her daughters said to Diane that, you know, Mom, the kids in our street have so much respect for you. Why don't you reach out to them and do the same thing to them that you do to us? And so she did. And she opened her door, and one by one they came. And what she discovered was, is that they weren't, you know, a bunch of criminals. They were people who had dreams and aspirations, and they wanted to be doctors and singers, and they wanted to go to school. And so one by one, she built this group from her house to the point that at, at one particular time, she had 75 people in her house at one time. And through a lot of prayer and patience, the Lord provided for uh, through funding for a new building, which uh, is now what's called the Kids Off the Block Community Center. And on a daily basis, Diane has between 30 and 50 people come in this house, in this community center, and uh, she has over 300 registered members, which all started with a very basic idea. Uh, so again, just a couple small, these, these are really big accomplishments, but a very simple idea that started with one person. So the question is, how do you develop the desire to help others? And for me personally, just to let you know a little bit about my history, I was born in a church. My father was a deacon. My mom played the piano. Uh, the church doors were open, I were there. Um, in the summer, I washed buses, vacuum floors, you know, all the stuff kids do uh, when their father's a deacon in a Baptist church. But when I was around 17 or 18 years old and started having, you know, I had a car and some freedom, I just uh, turned and went the opposite direction as fast as I could. And I did that for 20 years. And it was Jeff's world. Everything revolved around me. And I was the center of everything that I wanted to do with, with no recourse. And it wasn't, uh, like I said, I did this for about 20 years. But the amazing thing I discovered was, when I came back, God was still there, and He was waiting for me. And something that is really amazing about God is that He doesn't really care about yesterday. He cares about today. And when we get, we get, we're going to wake up tomorrow morning, He cares about that day. And it doesn't matter what you did in the past. Uh, it doesn't matter what you did this morning. He cares about right now and what's, what you're going to do in the future. So I say that to say that true service starts with developing a personal relationship with God. Because God is holy and we are not. If, if God is as far as I can reach holy, we're, we're so far separated from that 
there, there's just no way we can tie these connections together. But there's this amazing gift that God has given all of us. And that gift is called grace. And grace is something that is God-given, made possible only through Jesus Christ and none other. It is God's gift of salvation for sinners like you and I. And it is the key to developing a relationship with God. It is through His grace and the admission of our own sins and the acceptance that Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for you and I through His death and resurrection that we may be saved. And I would like to make an illustration if I could. Um, Jesus is the mirror in which we see God. In this Bible, if I don't lose my papers, this Bible is the spoken word of God, and this is how we receive our instruction from, from God. So have you ever um, tried to look at yourself in a really dirty mirror, or maybe had fog all over it? Um, maybe tried to shave, can't really see, cut your face? You know, it's just it's hard to see. So that dirt on that mirror is our sin. And so you have to ask, well, how do, how do we get the dirt off the sin? Is it, you know, use like Jesus Windex, or, or how do you do this? Well, well, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. And the amazing thing about the Holy Spirit is, the more that you pray, the more that you study the Word, the cleaner that mirror will become, and the better you can see Jesus in the instruction for your life. You put your Bible down, walk away, drift away, go back to your personal life, the mirror gets real foggy again. You come back, it starts cleaning up. It's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, but the thing that moves is us. It's, it's not God. He's always steady. He's steady where He's at, and He's right there waiting for us. And, and it's up to us to follow His instruction so that we can, can truly learn. A um, couple verses I would like to share. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and searchable things that you do not know. Another one, Isaiah 49, 23, and this is just a small piece of this verse, but I absolutely love this passage. It says, those who hope in me will not be disappointed. We won't get everything we want, but those who hope in Christ will not be disappointed. And then finally, Psalms 9, verses 9 and 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. God is looking for someone like you. Will you be that person? Will you be willing to do what you can, where you are, with the influence that God has given you to make a difference in other people's lives? Never estimate the power of one. All right. Let's give another... Uh... See, I didn't have to say nothing. I like that. I like that. Uh, we definitely want to appreciate uh, Cornerstone for coming out, Jeff for bringing the word, and the guys for bringing the soulful sounds of revival, right? We're expecting revival out here. Revival. So Satan wants you thinking that. He wants you broke, busted, and disgusted. But if you'll come back, come back to that mirror. If you'll start getting in that Word, start developing that relationship, start knowing God and Him knowing you, allowing Him to show Himself to you from glory to glory, revealing His truth to you, revealing His power to you, revealing His presence to you, revealing His destiny to you, and then don't run away from it. Seek Him. It says if you seek Him, you'll find Him. If you're not, guess what? Hey, door's open. It's going to be open done to you. He's not running from us. We're running from Him. It is His desire. It is His will to be a blessing to you. It is His, it is his desire. It is, it is His will to show and to bestow upon you His love. So, two things. Number one, if you have never known, if you've never, and it doesn't matter, just like he was talking about, he was, he was raised in the church, I was raised in the church, that doesn't mean nothing. 
That doesn't mean nothing. Until you make the decision to receive Jesus Christ in your life. He's there. He's there. Just like Jeff said, He's a constant. He's just like that river. That river is constantly flowing. But you ain't going to get wet until you do what? Dive in. God's constantly moving. He's constantly going. He's waiting for you to come to Him. He's not going to force Himself upon you. So if you know that God has a call on you, you know that God has a destiny and a plan for you, and it, you've already received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, it is now the time. It is now the time to start seeking Him and serving Him and doing what you know He's called you to do. And that is exactly like what He said. It's through prayer and the Word. Prayer and the Word. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? Hearing by the Word. And then, you show me your, faith, uh, you show me your actions by your faith, I will show you my faith by my actions. It's not, it's not just enough to have faith, but you've got to put actions behind that faith. You've got to get up off your backside and start doing. Amen? Amen. Now, if I'm speaking to those of you... Whoops, get out the way, legs. Get out the way. Get out the way. <laughs> oh, ah. Anyway, if I'm talking to you and you know... You know God's tugging on your heart and you have never... Like I say, you could have been raised in church. That doesn't mean anything. Until you make the decision to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord. That's when He enters into your life. That's when He enters into your life. So if you have never made that decision, you may have been to church every Sunday that the doors were open, but you've never confessed with your mouth or believed with your heart that Jesus is Lord, but you want to now... Be bold about your faith. Be meek as mice about yourself, but be bold as lions about your God. If that's you, and you know I'm talking to you, about for the first time receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, I want you to come on up here right now. Right now. Don't be looking at your neighbor. Is he going to look at me funny? Who cares? Who cares? All right. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm believing. I'm believing that everybody out here that... Is, is already saved and, and may, may have walked away from the mirror for a little bit, but is saved. Now, this isn't a come up here, but I just want to see a show of hands. How many people have walked away from that mirror and they're wanting to come back and do what God's called them to do? They want to start seeking God's face and start seeking His, His destiny, His call for your life. Alright? Alright, those of you, I want you all to stand up. We're not, I'm not going to have you come up, but I want you all to stand up. Now everybody else stand up and we're going to we're going to stand in agreement with these people that raise their hands and we're going to pray this prayer. We're going to pray this prayer and then we're going to close out. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I may have fallen. I may have fallen. But through your strength. Through your strength. Through your power. Through your power. I'm going to get back up again. I'm going to get back up again. And I'm going to do what you've called me to do. And if I don't know what your call is right now, I'm going to be in your face until you tell me what my call is, what my place is, what my purpose is in your body. I promise you that I will serve you and I will seek you all the days of my life. Forgive me for what I've done. I know it's washed away. I'm pursuing you. I'm running the race. I'm diving in. Amen.